All right, section 8.2. Uh, section 8.2 is all about polar coordinates. Uh, we're going to be looking at the basics of polar coordinates and looking a little bit, a little bit at the graphs and things like that. Uh, one thing I do want to point out about this section is that it's not super essential for most students. Um, there are some students who will go on and take Calculus 2 and we'll see this again there. Uh, some will even go beyond Calc 2 and see even more of it. Um, but it is important to have the general idea of how this works because what it'll actually do is it'll help you to understand more of your regular uh, coordinate systems uh, and really see how these things fit together into a an understandable coherent package. So anyway, polar coordinates. Before we talk about it, we will first review rectangular coordinates. Now, most people, when they think of rectangular coordinates, we think of the x and the y axis like this. And if I, if I give you a point like 3, 2, <coughs> I think of it as moving three steps in the x direction and then two steps in the y direction and you get the point 3, 2 right there. Um, but there's actually more to this and it's um, this distinction is very important to be able to understand. And so what's really happening here is we're looking at the intersection of two different lines. We have the vertical line here, the x equals 3 line, and then we have the horizontal line over here, the y equals 2 line. And this exactly corresponds to the idea that the coordinate x comma y is equal to 3 comma 2. This tells us that x equals 3 and y equals 2. And then when you look at points that, that satisfy that uh, this equation here that has both the property that x equals 3 and y equals 2, there is exactly one point that does that, and that is the point 3 comma 2. And if you keep on drawing out this diagram a little bit more, what you end up doing is you end up creating a grid built out of squares. And this sort of hints at why we call this rectangular coordinates sometimes. Rectangular coordinates. And that's because the basic shape, the fundamental shape of our grid is a rectangle. So when we talk about polar coordinates, we're talking about circles as our primary shape. So here's the origin. I just put a little dot there. And what we have is we have two different things happening. We have the radius and angle. Let's write this up here. Radius and angle. So what do we mean by that? Well, what we mean is that if that's the origin, we have a circle of radius 1. R equals 1. We'll have a circle of radius 2. R equals 2, and we can even, I'll squeeze it in, circle of radius 3. So those are, oh, those are radii, the radius. Now what about the angle? Well, this follows with our previous trigonometry. We call that, we're going to work with, um, well, let's work with radians. So we have zero radians. We go straight up. So uh, we call this, here, let's write this as theta equals 0 up there, sorry for squeezing it in, theta equals pi over 2, theta equals pi, theta equals 3 pi over 2, and then we could also go around and have theta equals 2 pi, theta equals 4 pi, 6 pi, and so on. So we can keep wrapping around over and over and over again. And then we have all the other angles, which I'm not going to fill in, but these are the angles that we get, um, our known angles from the unit circle. And we can start to fill out more of this grid. And so, for example, if we wanted to find a point, say the point 3, 5 pi over 6, this part right here, that is your radius, and right here is your angle. So we want to be on the intersection of the circle of radius 3. So circle of radius 3 is this one. And the angle being 5 pi over 6. Now, I didn't label any of these, um, but if you remember the unit circle, this is a pi over 6, this is a pi over 4, this one right here is pi over 4, 
pi over 3, and keep working your way around um, with those known angles, this one ends up being 5 pi over 6 over here. And so this point, 3 comma 5 pi over 6, is right here. So circle of radius 3 at the angle 5 pi over 6. So that is our 3 comma 5 pi over 6. Now with the radius, we can also use negative numbers. So we could have a negative 2 comma pi over 4. Now what would a negative radius be? Well, essentially what we're saying is that normally there's a positive direction, which is, you know, you go to the angle and you move outward. Uh, the negative number just tells you to move backwards. So we go to the angle pi over 4. So that's this one right here. And instead of going forward towards pi over 4, we'll actually go backwards out this way. And so this point right here is our negative 2 pi over 4. So the angle is pi over 4, but instead of going forward, we go backwards along that line. And so this is just a quick introduction to how we graph or how we plot points in polar coordinates. What we're going to do later is we're going to graph these things or graph, uh, well, create graphs using polar coordinates by sketching a bunch of points and then playing a game of connect the dots, much like when we started off with rectangular coordinates by plotting a bunch of points and playing connect the dots. This is just a quick note of something I caught after the fact. Uh, I've used the term rectangular coordinates in this video. Uh, you will also see the term Cartesian coordinates both in the book and elsewhere. Uh, both of these words mean the same thing. Uh, the phrase Cartesian coordinates actually refers to Rene Descartes, who was the person who conceptualized the idea of using coordinate systems the way we do. And so that name is an honor to him. Uh, but if you see rectangular coordinates, it means exactly the same thing as Cartesian coordinates.